Hello everybody and welcome back to another SFML tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to talk about the different events that you have for the window. So the first event we've already sort of covered last episode. That was the event that closed. So whenever we hit the X button it will call this event and then we need to do something accordingly. The reason that we have to do this manually, so we as programmers have to close the window, is so we can do something like save our game. The second type of event that you have when it comes to the window is a resize event. So an event will be called whenever we resize the window. Let's create another if statement, or actually let's create a switch statement for this. If you don't know what a switch is, I have an episode completely dedicated to functions on my channel. So check that out if you need to know that. So let's just create a switch statement. Which contains the event.type. So you want to create a switch about the event.type. And in here we want to create a case, which is sf event closed. Notice that we can't use event.closed anymore. That's because inside of a switch statement you can't use parameters from inside of a created class. And since event is a class that we created, we cannot use a centurial version of closed. So what we need to do is we need to call closed from the class itself. So sf event closed. And now in here we can do window closed. And if we remove this code, then it will not call it twice. And uh, let's add a break and create a second case. So case sf event, and then we need to go down to resized. What we want to do in this case is simply print out whatever the new window size is. So we can do that in two different ways. We can use console out or we can use printf. I'm going to show you both ways. First things first is include iostream. After we've done that, it's time to call the cout. So std because it's inside of the std namespace, cout. And then what we need to do is we need to call a parameter inside of the event, which is called size. And basically this is going to be the new size of the window. Size contains two values. As you can see, it contains a height and a width. So what we're going to do is we want to consult the width and then also consult the height. So event.size.height. Then an end line or an std end line. But if we were to run this program right now, it would just simply say the numbers next to each other attached. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little string which says new window width and then a space. New window width. And we want to do the same for height. So first the space because otherwise the other number will be attached to it. New window height. If we run a program, you will see that every time when we resize the window, it will console out the new width and new height. So it can make it really tiny. And what you will see is it will say the exact size of the window in pixels, of course. So let's now use printf. In order to use printf, you need to know the basic functionality. So in order to use printf, we need to call printf, and then in here we need to specify first a string. But the string contains a few special characters. So what we're going to type in here is simply the same that we did here, but the formatting is a bit different. In order to add integers or floats to printf, we need to specify where we want to. So it's not like cout that we simply push all things into after each other in the order that we want. No, with printf we have a string and we use some special characters to indicate this is where we want an integer to be, this is where we want a flow to be, a boolean, etc. And then we specify those integers and floats later. So we first type in new window width. And now we need to specify an integer because the width is an integer. And the way that we do that is we type in the percent then an i, an i for integer. In order to do a float, you type in the f, a char is a c, and a boolean is a b. But we want to use an i for integer. I have a space, and then type in a new window i, and then do another percent i. And then after this, we need to specify a few more parameters, and that's the width and the height, or the two percent i's that we made. So evnt.size.width and evnt.size.height. So now if we comment out the C out, and we run this program again, and you will see that every time we resize the window, it will look exactly the same in the console, other than that I forgot to specify a new line, which I'm going to do right now. 
In order to use a new line in printf, we can't just simply call a city end line. No, what we need to do is we need to use the character for end line, which is a slash end. But make sure that you use this slash, so the one that's above the return key. And if we run it program again, we'll see that if you resize the window right now, it will actually show it on the new line. That's basically all I have to say today. In the next episode, we're going to learn about the events when it comes to keyboard input. So see you next time.